Everyone, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE here in Palo Alto on a remote interview for a special video interview at the EC2 15th birthday party celebration event. Raj Pai, who's the vice president of EC2 product management with AWS is here with me. Um, congratulations on Amazon Web Services, EC2, it's the compute. What a journey, 15 years old. Soon we had the keys to the car and a couple more years. So uh, Raj, great to see you. You guys have been doing great work, congratulations. Thank you, it's great being here. It's super exciting for me too. I can't believe it's 15 years and um, you know, I think we're still at the very beginning. Um, as, you, as you know, that we often say. The building blocks that have been there from the beginning really set the table and it's just been fun to watch the innovation on behalf of customers that you guys have done at AWS and, the, and more. And for entrepreneurs and for developers, it just continues to be great and the edge is right on the corner, wavelength, all the great stuff. But let's talk about uh, uh, the, the, the specific topic here that I really want to drill into is that as you look at the 15th year birthday for, for EC2, okay, you're looking at the future as well. You look at the past, present, and future. And one of the things that's most compelling about recent aid, uh, reInvent was the Graviton performance numbers are amazing. You guys have been building custom silicon uh, for a while. You also work with Intel and AMD. What is it about? What's the huge investment for you guys? Why are you starting to see some returns? Are you seeing returns? And then why did AWS decide to build its own processors? Yeah, no, it's a really good question. And, and I mean, like with everything else we do in AWS, it's, it's all about innovating on behalf of our customers. And one of the things our customers are telling us and they continue to tell us is they want to see you know, better performance at lower prices. And uh, we've been able to deliver that with our hardware partners for the last 15 years. But as we've understood the workloads that, that run on EC2 and AWS, we saw an opportunity. Like how, what if we were going to go and design our own processor that was really optimized for the sort of workload that customers run on the cloud uh, and, and make design decisions when, when designing the, the, the CPU and the system on a chip around the CPU that, that does things like bring a lot more uh, core local cache and, and and, and speeds up the, the, the parts of the operations uh, that really benefit real world workloads. So, um, you know, this isn't about benchmarks, it's about like how do real world uh, workloads perform and how do we build systems that optimize that performance? And with Graviton, we were able to hit the nail on the head. We were also very pleasantly surprised when we, when we got our first uh, uh, chips off the line. And um, we're seeing that a customer that gets about 40% uh, performance improvement at a significantly lower cost. And that's that's super exciting. And that's one of the reasons we're getting so much interest from our customers. I got to say, as, as, a, as a geek and a tech nerd, I love the, per, the silicon development and there's benefits there and also the performance is there. The thing that also is pretty obvious that's happening as, and the world's seeing it is the shift towards ARM-based computing. What kinds of customers and use cases are you seeing adopt the Graviton? And what kind of workloads are they running on? Were the things that surprised you guys that you didn't surprise? I mean, Andy Jackson's always talking about the uptick and how everyone's leveraging it. What are some of the examples? Take us through some of the customers, use cases, workloads. What's surprising you and, and, and what's, what's going on with Graviton? Yeah, so I think the, the biggest surprise for us is how broadly applicable it's been. So one of the things we did, um, we launched with reInvent is, as you know, like we have different form factors of compute. We have memory optimized instances that are good for databases and in-memory caches. We have compute optimized for, um, you know, HPC and and and, uh, and workloads that really take advantage of the performance uh, of a uh, of the chip. And then we have um, uh, general purpose workloads, and we we introduced. Graviton variants of all those uh, instance families. And we're actually seeing the same sort of performance ben benefits across workloads. So, um, and it's one of the reasons why companies like Nextrel and Snap and SmugMug, uh, they, they move one workload over, they see the performance benefit. And before you know it, they're starting to move uh, workloads and mass over across kind of that spectrum. So I, I think um, that's one of the, the, the biggest surprises is, is that Graviton seems to do well across a wide range, and and we're going to keep on introducing it to more and more of our instance families uh, because we've seen this this uptick as well. You're seeing a lot of people move to the Graviton. You mentioned a few of those early adopters who are pushing the envelope, and uh, they're always kind of you know trotted out there as examples at, at reInvent, which is always fun to see what they're what they're working on next. What is the and now is that people see the Graviton two instances? Okay, the architecture is different, higher performance. 
How much effort do you, our customers typically need to, to move to Graviton2 instances? Um, and what are some of the benefits they're seeing on performance and, and price performance? Can you talk about that transition? Because that's natural evolution for them. Yeah, it's actually a lot less than they originally think. So I, some of the hardest uh, um, effort is just getting them over the line to try it. So, um, you know, one of the things that we tell our customers uh, who are considering Graviton is, you just take one, one or two of your developers, take one workload and go off for a couple of weeks and, and just try porting it to Graviton. And more often than not, uh, they come back to us in like four or five days. They're like, it works. Now we just have to, we have to do some testing and verification, but we were able to port it because, you know, the operating system support was there, the, the ISP support was there and the tools that they use. And they're using, in most cases, modern programming languages, you know, like Python or Go or Java or PHP, where you know interpreter languages just run. Uh, and so uh, there's very, very little lift in comparison to what people think it's going to be. And that's one of the reasons that um, you know one of the big announcements we made in the last few weeks is uh, what we're calling the Graviton Challenge, right? So it's it's a set of blueprints for customers to essentially have best practices on how to in four days take you know a piece of code a piece of workload and and execute it and run it and and migrate it to, to graviton and we're seeing a lot of interest in that um, as, as people and the community realize how easy it actually is what are some of the cool price performance um, things that are emerging I mean obviously it makes sense if you don't really need it don't don't pay for it but you have that option a lot of people are going there are is there a wave you see coming that Graviton 2 is going to be really set up for that you kind of see some early signals coming in, Raj, because I mean, I, I can see the 64 bit, I can see where Graviton fits today. Obviously performance is key. Is it certain, is it certain things that are emerging? What's the main problems that it solves? Well, I think anything that's a multi-threaded architecture is going to do really well on Graviton because of the, you know, we have really densely packed 64 uh, cores and so you're going to see things like microservices and containers uh, and workloads that are more um, that, that that are able to take aware, advantage of that parallel execution do really really well. And so you know we say 40% performance improvement, but like when our customers have gone and tried this, they've seen you know upwards of 50% depending on the workload. So um, you, you know it, it, it's going to be uh, more your multi-threaded applications. And there's some applications that may not be a fit, like if you have a legacy. Um, you know, for example, like you know, there's there's some software that hasn't yet been moved over, and, and we're going to continue to invest, you know, super heavily in, in our whole ecosystem of of, uh, of hardware, um, you know, uh, for for the long term. So I, I think that you know, this gives customers a great option, and we just encourage them to try it, and they'll and they'll learn from their experience what what works and what doesn't. Well, 15th birthday, it's still growing up, and you know, it's starting to get more mature. You're the VP of product management. You have the keys to the kingdom. So uh, you have wide ranging responsibilities. Share with us if you can. I know the, the uh, you, you really can't say much, but try to give a little bit of teaser. You got wavelength. I can see the dots connecting at the edge. You got outposts. So I see all that emerging. I can almost imagine that this is going to get stronger. What should people think about? Where's the headroom for EC2 with Graviton and Graviton2? Yeah, no, I, I think like, and, and you you are connecting to the dots yourself, but like our goal is to have AWS kind of everywhere our customers are. And that means like the full power of AWS. So I think you're going to see, uh, you know, more and more of us uh, having EC2 and compute capacity wherever customers need it. That could be in an outpost, that could be on their 5G network, that could be in a city right next to them, right? And you're going to see us continue to offer the variety, the you know, the selection of instances and and platforms in all those locations as well. So uh, I think it's you know the, the key for us is to be ubiquitous and and have compute power everywhere our customers need it, in the form factors they need it. That's awesome. Congratulations. I love the power. You can't go wrong with putting sending compute where the data is, where the customers are. AWS, Amazon Web Services, building their own custom silicon with Graviton2 processors. This is EC2 continuing to grow up. Raj Pai, Vice President of EC2 Product Manager. Thank you for coming on and sharing the update and congratulations on the 15th birthday to EC2. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great. Um, have a great Friday. All right, great. I'm Jeff Furrier with theCUBE. You're watching theCUBE coverage of EC2's 15th birthday event. Thanks for watching.